Have you ever felt stuck in life like your wheels are spinning in quicksand? What sneaky habits could be holding us back from achieving our dreams? In this video, we'll uncover five everyday tendencies that secretly block the law of attraction. These patterns hide beneath the surface, quietly sabotaging our energy, repelling opportunities and choking our spiritual growth. By dragging these habits into the light, we can rewrite old stories that no longer serve us. When we let go of heavy baggage and anchor fully in the present, we realign with our true essence. This clears space for creative inspiration to flow through us. The first attraction-killing habit is getting trapped dwelling on the past. This poisons our natural wellspring of creativity, inspiration, and guidance, always available in the now. As Buddha said, do not dwell in the past or stress about the future, just be here now. Yet how often do we ignore this wisdom, replaying old memories or getting haunted by past wounds, our minds easily get snagged in tales of yesterday. Lost in the phantom world of should-haves and could-haves, we go deaf and blind to subtle invitations happening now, oblivious to the messages woven into this moment, which is always ripe with potential. So consider, where does your mind go when you feel unhappy or unfulfilled? Are you plagued by obsessive thoughts about past failures, rejections, trauma, does your mind constantly leap ahead, craving imaginary achievements always out of reach? These habits sever your connection to the creative juices flowing through the timeless now. Come back to stillness, to the silent witness within that sees all but holds on to nothing. Anchor in being, right here and now. When you tune into the present, inspired action naturally arises. Imagine you're trying to drive a car but your wheels are stuck in the mud. You rev the engine, but the car doesn't move. That's what it's like when we're stuck in the past. We're trying to move forward, but our energy is stuck in the quicksand of old memories and regrets. The past is like a shadow that follows us everywhere. It's a part of us, but it shouldn't define us. When we dwell on past mistakes or successes, we're giving away our power to create a better future. We're essentially saying, I'm not good enough, or I've already blown it. Think about it. When you're in a conversation with someone and they start talking about their past, what do you do? You listen, right? You're present for them, but you're not dwelling on their past. You're not judging them or labeling them based on what they've done or haven't done. You're simply being with them in the present moment. If you were in the present moment right now, you'd realize you should be subscribed. Thank you. So that's what we need to do for ourselves. We need to learn to listen to our own inner dialogue without judgment. When we catch ourselves dwelling on the past, we need to gently bring our attention back to the present. We can do this by taking a deep breath, feeling our feet on the ground, or noticing the sensations in our body. The present moment is like a blank canvas, waiting for us to paint it with our thoughts, emotions, and actions. When we're present, we're not limited by our past. We're free to create a new story, a new reality. We're not stuck in the mud anymore. We're moving forward, creating a better future for ourselves and those around us. So I invite you to take a step back and observe your thoughts. Notice when you're dwelling on the past and gently bring your attention back to the present. Practice this every day and you'll start to notice a shift in your energy. You'll feel lighter, freer, and more inspired to take action towards your dreams. Remember, the present moment is a gift. It's the only moment we have and it's always ripe with potential. Let's unwrap this gift with gratitude and excitement and let's create a brighter future for ourselves and our world. Now, let's move on to the next section where we'll explore how clinging to painful identities can stunt our personal growth and evolution. 
Imagine you're wearing a heavy backpack filled with rocks. You've been carrying it for so long that you've forgotten it's even there. But the weight is taking a toll on your body and you're starting to feel tired, stressed and uncomfortable. That's what it's like when we cling to painful identities. We're carrying around a heavy burden that's weighing us down, limiting our potential and preventing us from fully experiencing life. Painful identities are like old, worn-out stories that we tell ourselves about who we are, what we're capable of, and what we deserve. They're based on past experiences, cultural conditioning, and limiting beliefs that we've taken on as our own. For example, if you've been told that you're not good enough or that you'll never amount to anything, you might have taken on that identity and made it your own. You might have started to believe that you're not worthy of love, success, or happiness. But here's the thing, those stories aren't true. They're just a collection of words and beliefs that we've accumulated over time. They're not who we truly are. So how do we let go of these painful identities? How do we shed that heavy backpack and walk freely? We do it by becoming aware of our thoughts and emotions. We notice when we're thinking or feeling in a way that's not serving us. We observe those thoughts and emotions with compassion, without judgment. And we gently challenge them by asking ourselves, is this really true? When we question our limiting beliefs, we create space for new, empowering beliefs to emerge. We start to see ourselves in a new light. We start to believe in our own potential, our own worthiness. And that's when the magic happens. That's when we start to attract new experiences, new opportunities and new relationships that reflect our new empowered identity. Let's challenge those limiting beliefs together and create a new narrative that supports your highest potential. Let's shed that heavy backpack and walk freely with joy enthusiasm and purpose. Imagine you're playing a game of tennis. You're on the court, racket in hand, ready to serve. But instead of serving the ball, you start blaming your opponent for your mistakes. It's their fault I missed that shot. They're the ones who made me lose my serve. Sounds ridiculous, right? But that's exactly what we do when we play the blame game. We're constantly pointing fingers at others instead of taking responsibility for our own actions and outcomes. When we blame others, we're essentially saying, I have no control over my life. I'm a victim of circumstance. It's a way of avoiding accountability and dodging the truth. But here's the thing. The truth is, we always have a choice. We can choose to take responsibility for our actions, to learn from our mistakes and to grow as individuals. Or we can choose to blame others and stay stuck in a cycle of negativity and victimhood. The problem with blaming others is that it creates a negative mindset. It reinforces the belief that we're powerless and that life is happening to us rather than for us. It's a way of thinking that repels positive outcomes and attracts more negativity into our lives. So how do we stop playing the blame game? How do we take back control and start taking responsibility for our own lives? We do it by becoming aware of our thoughts and emotions. We notice when we're blaming others or feeling like a victim. Take a closer look at your own thoughts and emotions. Are you playing the blame game? Are you constantly pointing fingers at others? Let's take back control together. Let's stop blaming others and start taking responsibility for our own lives. Let's choose to grow, to learn, and to become the best version of ourselves. Imagine you're on a treasure hunt. You've been searching for the treasure for hours, days, maybe even weeks. You've been following every lead, every map, every clue, but no matter how hard you search, you can't seem to find the treasure. That's what it's like when we're chasing empty accumulation. We're constantly searching for something outside of ourselves that will make us happy, fulfilled, and complete. We think that if we just had a little more money, a little more success, 
a little more fame, then we'd finally be satisfied. But the truth is, the treasure we're searching for is inside of us. It's our inner wisdom, our inner peace, our inner purpose. And no amount of external accumulation can replace that. When we chase empty accumulation, we're like a dog chasing its tail. We're constantly running around in circles, never really getting anywhere. We're exhausted, stressed, and unfulfilled. But here's the thing. We don't need to chase external treasures to find happiness. We don't need to accumulate more and more stuff to feel fulfilled. Because true fulfillment comes from within. So how do we stop chasing empty accumulation? How do we find the treasure within? We do it by slowing down. We take a step back and observe our thoughts and emotions. We notice when we're chasing something outside of ourselves that we think will make us happy. So, my friend, I invite you to take a closer look at your own desires and aspirations. Are you chasing empty accumulation? Are you searching for the treasure outside of yourself? Take a step back and observe your thoughts and emotions. Let's find the treasure within and let's create a life of true fulfillment and purpose. Imagine you're a tree. You have deep roots that ground you to the earth, a strong trunk that supports you, and branches that reach up towards the sky. You're a beautiful, thriving tree, full of life and potential. But what happens when you ignore your true essence? When you forget that you're a tree and start to believe that you're something else entirely, you might start to feel lost, disconnected, and unfulfilled. You might start to struggle and strive, trying to fit into a mold that's not truly yours. You might start to feel like you're constantly swimming against the tide, fighting against the current instead of flowing with it. That's what it's like when we ignore our true essence. We're like a tree trying to be a bird or a fish trying to be a mammal. We're trying to be something we're not and it's causing us pain and suffering. But here's the thing. We don't have to ignore our true essence. We don't have to forget who we truly are and what we're capable of. We can embrace our uniqueness, our quirks, our talents, and our strengths. We can be ourselves fully and unapologetically. So how do we stop ignoring our true essence? How do we embrace our true selves and align with universal abundance? We do it by getting still, we take a moment to quiet our minds, to listen to our hearts, and to feel our intuition. We notice when we're trying to fit into a mold that's not truly ours. We gently challenge those thoughts and beliefs by asking ourselves, is this really true? When we challenge our limiting beliefs, we create space for new, empowering beliefs to emerge. We start to see that we're not limited by our current circumstances. We start to believe in our own potential, our own worthiness, and our own unique talents and strengths. And that's when the magic happens. That's when we start to attract new experiences, new opportunities, and new relationships that reflect our true essence. We start to flow with the current instead of struggling against it we start to feel fulfilled, aligned, and connected to the universe. What are your thoughts? Would love to hear you in the comments section. Let us know how you'll attract all your desires by avoiding these five bad habits.